Good morning. Good morning. I never get sick of hearing that or seeing that. I always get so choked up and inspired by it. But good morning, everyone. It is good to see you and a joy and a blessing to be with you all. I'm Richard Mirage. I'm the senior minister here uh, at Unity of Phoenix. Today is Father's Day. Hawaiian Shirt Day is our tradition. We're going to be loving up our dads and supporting them a little later on. But right now we just have two very clear intentions. The first one is that you have a profound and moving experience of God this morning. That we hope that whatever's going on in your life, whatever's concerning you, that we can help you set it aside and open a space to allow God to uplift you, inspire you, heal you, and open you to a fuller and richer experience of life. And our second intention is that you feel a sense of community. You feel a sense of connection and oneness. There is something amazing of when we join together, that there's an energy that we all create just being here for each other that uplifts and supports each and every one of us. So I hope you're ready for those intentions. Everybody just take a deep breath and just open yourself to an amazing experience of God and life this morning. And welcome, everyone. And my name is Jimmy Scott, pastoral care minister here at the Unity of Phoenix. My pleasure to be here as well. Happy Father's Day. A few of us were having a brilliant discussion over here on my left a little earlier about a certain minister who used to come here all the time by the name of Richard Levy, and uh, none of us could remember his name. So somewhere between that and Father's Day, there's a link but maybe it's about old dads. <laughs> anyway, good morning. Uh, let's take our mission statement together. Unity of Phoenix, Phoenix is, is a, a loving, loving spiritual, spiritual community, community that welcomes uh, all people and honors all paths to God. We are dedicated to transforming lives by inspiring and awakening individuals to discover God's spirit within them. So uh, today is also Father's Day, so we just want to acknowledge our fathers for all your love, all your support, all your care. So with all their fathers, dads, stepdads, in what way you've ever uh, raised a child as, a, as a, a dad or a father, would you all stand up so we could just thank you and honor you and love you up? Let's hear it for our fathers. So everybody stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. So we have a thing where we uh, honor uh, the the oldest uh, father, the father with the most kids, and the uh, newest father. So let's start with the oldest. So how about if you are 70 or older, stay standing. All right. 75 or older, stay standing. Okay, how about 80 or older, stay standing. 85 or older, stay standing. Okay, wait, let's see how many left. 85. Two left, is it two? Uh, three. three. Okay, four. how about 80? Uh, actually, it's four. 80, how about 80, did I say 85? Yeah. Okay, how about 88 and older? Okay. How about 90 or older? You are kidding me, man. Are you serious? <laughs> Both of you? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Are, are you... It's 90. Bob, uh, how old are you guys? Bob, how old are you, man? 90. 90. John, how old are you? Somebody asked John how old he is. (laughs) 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 Are they both 90? (laughs) Hey, Wilma. Oh, they got them? Okay. All right. So both of our 90-year-old dads will be getting Starbucks cards to, uh, to enjoy a little later. It's the best we could do right now. It's as creative as men can come up with the ideas we can come up with. So how about um, uh, most children? If you are the parent of, uh, th- if you're the dad of three or more kids, would you stand up? Three or more kids? Three or more? Okay. Wow, there's a... Okay, four or more. Stay standing. Four or more. Five or more. Six or more? Seven or more? Eight or more? We have a winner at eight kids. Let's hear it for them. Are there more? Are there more? Oh, it's ten. Let's clap again. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. And 
God bless you, man. That's fantastic. Uh, I, I'm from one to ten. I'm one to ten myself, so I know how hard it could be on the parents. So, okay. How about news? If you became a dad in the last three years, would you stand up? Okay. So we got a few. How about in the last two years? In the last year and a half? In the last? Are they two standing still? Yeah. Okay. Six months. Okay. Four months. Three months? Two months? Last week? What is it? I mean, <laughs> all right, Dennis, congratulations. Seven days? Congratulations. That's it for Dennis. So we just want to acknowledge and thank uh, all of our dads for the hard work, for the love, for being great providers, supporters, and, and, and being so caring. Uh, your, your presence makes a difference not only to your kids, uh, but to all of us in our community and our world. So one more time, let's hear it for our fathers. Thank you guys so much. Now is that time in our service for a time of prayer and meditation. But before we do that, I'd just like to ask you to take a few moments of silence in recognition of all the families in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and all of the hurt and the pain that's taken place in that city, and just hold those families in our hearts for just a few moments of silence, if you will. As we raise our consciousness, we are always aware that uh, healing the power of God is always at work, no matter how tragic circumstances or conditions are. And so we know that that healing presence is mightily at work right now in the hearts and minds of all the people who have been injured, their family members, and our world. And we know out of this that some good will come forth, and we'll know it when we see it. And so it is. Amen. for a time of meditation. So if you have your cell phones with you, I want to encourage you to either place those on silence, uh, vibrate, and Sally Jo will lead us in our meditational song. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Just an ever so gentle reminder for us to turn inwardly and to find that place of peace, and that place of centeredness, and that place of love from whence our spirit comes. And this morning, as we enter into this time of quietness and meditation, may we be reminded of our oneness with all of humanity and our oneness with the world. And may we also be reminded that there is a power within us that is greater than anything in the external world. And it is through that power that we are able to heal the body and the mind and the spirit. And it is through that power that we are able to transform our lives and 
positive and constructive and productive ways. And it is through that power that we are able to bless one another as we move to and fro on this incredible planet. It is also through that power that we elevate our personal relationships. And we are able to increase the level of abundance in our lives. So as we enter into a time of quietness, a time of silence, I invite you to shut out the outer world. Find that space in your heart where you are open and receptive to God's presence. And then allow that presence to illuminate your entire physical and mental, emotional and spiritual being. So I invite you to take a deep, refreshing breath and just settle back in your seat for a few moments. Get comfortable, let go of any tightness or any tension. And for the next few moments, just be quiet. Breathe freely and deeply. And find that place of gratitude for all the incredible blessings you have in your life. So in the words of the psalmist, be still. We give thanks this morning for all the blessings in our lives. But more importantly, we give thanks for the presence and power of God that strengthens us, that encourages us, that supports us, and that inspires us to become better and better and better. And so it is. Amen.
Good morning again, everyone. <clears throat> so how many people here have ever said yes when you to start doing something when you really wanted to say no? Anybody ever have one of those? Or how many people have ever <clears throat> had a hard time saying no to someone because you didn't want to disappoint them uh, or hurt them in any way? Anybody ever do that? And how many people would agree that the word no in our culture kind of sounds a little negative, unkind, or even rude? It's funny he's got... So today we're talking about the power of no. And I think this word no is something that most of us aren't really very comfortable with. We don't like hearing no or being told no. And we equally don't like um, saying no or telling other people no as well. And I think we have a discomfort with the word no. And I think it's because at some level I don't think we fully understand what it means. It kind of reminds me of this Pickles uh, comic strip. And Grandpa is talking to Cat, his cat. Grandpa's talking to Cat. And Grandpa says, stupid Cat. You've got paw prints all over my windshield again. I told you a hundred times, no walking on my car. Don't you know the meaning of the word no? And the cat says, yes, it means not while you're looking. And um, <laughs> see, and I think sometimes we're as confused as this cat about what no uh, really means. You know, I think sometimes we underestimate the power the importance and the value of saying no in our lives. And I truly believe that whether we say no or don't say no, that saying it or not saying it has a huge impact on every area of our life. Our peace of mind, our balance, our self-worth, our level of success, and our level of happiness. I also believe, if you go a little deeper, that saying no is a key and important aspect of our spiritual life and having a deeper awareness, experience, and, our, and oneness with God, that we need to learn how to say no. And the fact is, most of us don't like no. Now, we do love us some yes, but we don't like no. We love yes. Yes gets all the praise, all the glory, all the accolades. It gets all the press. You know, we all love uh, hearing yes. It sounds empowering. It sounds affirming. We love yes. You know, just to hear yes or say yes feels good. Yes. Doesn't that feel good? Let's say yes three times in a row. And let's see how it feels, okay, together? Yes, yes, yes. Take a deep breath. One more time. Yes, yes, yes. Doesn't that feel pretty good? Now, we don't get as excited to say no. It's not warm and fuzzy. Let's try that. Let's say no three times. How about that? No, no, no. Are you feeling as good as when you said yes? I'm thinking, no. And so, uh, interesting thing is I read an article in Time Magazine, and it said that there are two words, the two most important words in our lives that will lead us to happiness and success are yes and no. That saying yes will bring us happiness, saying no will actually bring us greater success. Here's the interesting thing. It said that it's not only important that we have both, but it's even more important that we have a strong no, because having a no gives greater value and meaning to our yes. If we have no no, our yes isn't as meaningful or valuable. Does this make sense, everyone? No is more powerful than we realize. Warren Buffett, who is the most successful inventor of the 20th century, third wealthiest person in the world, business magnet, everybody knows Warren Buffett. Here's what he said about the power of no. He said, The difference between successful people and very successful people is that very successful people say no almost to everything. So if Warren Buffett's right, and this article is right, that saying no is a powerful and important thing for our success and happiness and peace of mind, why is it that we have such a hard time saying no? And I'd say there are several reasons. Number one is, we generally want to help people. The reason we don't say no is because we want to help and make a difference. Another one is we don't want to seem rude or unkind by not helping. Third is we want to be liked. So you know, saying yes to people is actually very pleasing to them. Another reason we have a hard time uh, saying no is that we want to avoid conflict at any cost. And being agreeable, it helps us get along and sort of rocking the boat and creating any conflict. Another one is a fear of lost opportunities. If I say no, I might miss something. If I say no, I, so I should say yes to everything because I don't want to miss out on stuff. 
And the last one is that at some level, an extension of the last one, uh, we have a hard time saying no because we don't want to burn any bridges. We think if we tell a particular person no, it might sever the relationship and burn any bridges to any future success. So those are some of the reasons why many of us have a hard time saying no, but there are consequences. See, when we don't say no uh, to other people, when we don't say no to requests, what happens is that other people's priorities take precedence over ours. Is that we get overscheduled and gets us irritated and frustrated, and it kind of undermines our own self-care and our well-being because we're running to and fro. Another one is it undermines our level of honesty and intimacy in our relationships. You know, someone said in an article I read, it says, if you feel you can't say no in your relationship, you're not experiencing love, you're experiencing control. That sometimes when we are never say no, it is actually, it affects the level of honesty and intimacy because we're not being really honoring of ourselves by only saying yes. Another one is cuts us, when we don't say no, it cuts ourselves off from the yes and the important things we really want to do in our lives. And finally, is that when we uh, don't say no, we ultimately feel disconnected from ourselves. We feel disconnected from God, and we don't live our lives as authentically as we can be living it. So last week, Reverend Rogers did a fabulous talk about um, power, about claiming our power, and sometimes we're afraid of power. Well, I would say... Sometimes we're afraid of having too much power, but the other side of it is sometimes we feel like we have no power at all, that we think that we are powerless um, and hopeless, and that's not true. Neither one of them is true. It's, we don't need to be afraid of power, and it's not that we don't have any power. It's actually in the middle. We have amazing power. The question is how we're using it. Second Timothy <clears throat> says this, God, God has not given us a spirit of timidity or fear, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. God has given us a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. And one of the greatest acts of the power that God has given us is the power to say no. No is an incredible power that God has given every single one of us. And no is the ability to clear away the things that are unproductive, unhealthy, that are not worthwhile, that are harmful, that are not in alignment with the life that we want to live and the person we want to be. It is about clearing those things away and denying those things attention and time that that we sometimes end up giving them. I was reading a book this week called The Power of No, and it said it's a little word that makes a big difference. It's a little word that if we master and learn how to use the power of no effectively, we can break through to greater levels of joy, love, happiness, and abundance. So my question for you is, where in your life are you having a hard time saying no? Where in your life have you not given yourself permission to say and to use your power of no? Where in your life, whether it's your relationship, your work, your friends, your health, your neighbors, are you allowing yourself to do things you know that are not honoring of you or helpful for you, that you know it's time for you to put a stop to and just say no? You know, God has given every one of us the power to say no. It's an amazing power. It is a power that liberates us and frees us from that negativity and the unproductive and harmful ideas and thoughts and actions that we can sometimes allow to be present in our lives. God has given me the power to say no. Let's say that together. God has given me the power to say no. It is important for me to say no together. It is important for me to say no. It is empowering for me to say no together. It is empowering for me to say no. I have the power and the responsibility to just say no together. I have the power and the responsibility to just say no. It is an incredible power that we all have that we sometimes underutilize. And it is a great thing to liberate us and free us to have a more fulfilled life. So how do we begin to engage this power of no? Well, Jesus, in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 37, said this, Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Anything beyond these is of evil. And one of the things that he's saying there, and I think that's so important for us to find our no, is the first thing is that we need to be clear 
that our yes needs to be yes and our no needs to be no. I think there are several times in my life I've been very indecisive. People would ask me, what would you like? Well, I don't know. Would you, would you, what movie you'd like to see? I don't care. Anybody ever been uh, indecisive, aren't sure? Should I do this? Should I? Anybody be wish, wishy-washy indecisive? Okay, about four of us. Okay, that's good. And um, one of the things is that it's hard to say no when you're really not clear about what you want. And it's one of the most powerful things that we need to get clear about what it is that we want. You know, sometimes in, in life, we, we either do things. We're either confused. Uh, uh, the, the, the lack of clarity makes us confused, or we end up do to, doing too much. And both are a sign. When we're doing everything, it's a sign we're not clear. And we're confused and doing nothing, it's a sign we're not clear. So either one, the answer is that we need to find a level of clarity. Because the truth is, we can't do everything. Warren Buffett actually said, the road to mediocrity is to try to do everything. Trying to do everything is the road to mediocrity. Saying yes to everything is not healthy. It's not productive. It's not smart. There's a Zen saying that says, if you try to chase two rabbits, they'll both escape. And the fact is, if we try to say yes to everything and everyone, it will actually, well, it escapes. It dissipates as our energy, is our, our focus. See, God has given us an abundant universe to do anything we want, but the fact is, we can't do everything. At some point, we need to get clear is, what are my priorities? What is the most important thing to me? You know, what do I stand for? What kind of life do I really want to create? You know, what are my goals? How do I want to spend my time? Who do I want to spend my time with? And we need to be, the clearer we are about what we want, the easier it is to say no to the things that are taking up our times that we actually don't want or need. So when we're clear that we want, are about health and wellness, it's easier to say no to not exercising. It's easier to say no to McDonald's or donuts. Ex maybe not. Okay, I'm sorry, Jimmy. That, that, everything in moderation. <laughs> you know, when you're committed to prosperity, it's easier to say no to lack thinking. It's easier to say no to complaining about what's not working in our lives. It's easier to stop ourselves from comparing ourselves to other people. When we're committed to a life of peace of mind, it's easier to say no to being resentful and blaming other people. It's easier uh, you know, for, for us to, be, to say no to not being willing to forgive. To me, saying no is not a negative word. In fact, it's a hugely positive one because when we say no to certain things, it affirms who we want to be. It affirms a life that we want to live, the things that we want to create, the things we want to enjoy and do. Somebody once said the world and the universe clears a path to those who know what they want. The clarity is one, and focus are one of the most important things. You know, it, the universe will support you once you get clear about your no. When you are clear about what you want, your no will become clear. You know, and somebody once said that when you are clear about what your boundaries are, and boundaries are very, very important, is that when you are clear about your boundaries, you will teach other people how to treat you. That if someone's not treating us well in our lives, it's because we at some level haven't said no, and this is what the boundary is. And sometimes after years of the pattern of it doing, it takes a little work, but when you get clear that this is the behavior, that this you know, is acceptable and not, and you're clear about that and willing uh, you know, to, to really own it, then, then it, it becomes easier and people will begin to change. Interesting thing is I find that there are two aspects of saying no. It's not just saying no to other people about their actions, words, behaviors, things you'll do and not do. It's also saying no to yourself and our destructive patterns and, 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 and habitual behaviors that aren't helpful. Like last week, you know, I was sitting there um, and I just had some food and there, somebody had brought over three or four chocolate chip cookies. I'm trying to not eat sugar, but somehow they ended up in my house. And I could swear they were calling me they were saying, whispering sweet nothings, come eat me, big boy. That's what it was saying. I thought I heard that. I don't know. But, and the thing is, a part of me, like I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do. And yet I ended up eating all those three cookies. <laughs> they were good. But I'm saying, sometimes the biggest no is the no, no we need to make to ourselves. The unnecessary purchase. Or having another drink or being involved in a re entering a relationship we know that may not be good for us, or eating a, 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 some chocolate cake, or not doing our exercise when, when we're committed to our health. So the no isn't 
just about outside. The biggest no is to learn is here, to get clear about who we are and what we stand for and how we want to live. You know, and then I think we've got to go even deeper. It's not just about other people and ourselves. We've got to go deeper into God and to find out what our soul wants us to say no to. So maybe there's a really good job we're in right now, but your soul is saying, I have something greater for you. Maybe there are some relationships that are looking that they're pretty good, but maybe Spirit is saying there's something here that it's time for you to let go. And the fact is we need to spend some time with Spirit to really get clear of what is my soul really calling me to do? When we feel disconnected or lost, we, we sometimes need to say, Spirit, so what is my direction? Where, what in my life do I need to let go? You know, what is the new change or direction that you're calling me to? I mean, I love in the book of James, it says, if you are lacking in anything, ask God who gives generously. So if, if you're lost about what, not being sure what you want, ask God. Say, Spirit, what is it that's next for me? You know, what, it, what is it do I need to change or let go? I love uh, Psalm 37. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Remember when I heard that, I thought, oh, yeah, delight myself in God and I get anything I want? Until I realized it was a lot deeper than that. And I've said it a few times here, and I love it. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Are you hearing that? Delight, and he will give you desires. Your, your desires will become of spirit, not just your thinking. It will become of your soul. So the clarity that I'm talking about is not just thinking about how you want other people to treat you and then how you want to act, but to go a little deeper and say, Spirit, what is it? What is it that you're calling me to? But I guarantee you, clarity. You know, when, when, when we hear Jesus say, ask and you shall find, uh, no, no, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be We get all excited about that. But what that's really saying is take time and get clear about who you want to be, how you want to live, and that clarity will open a space for spirit, spirit to do great things in you. So the second thing we need to do, I think, and to learn to say no is to have the courage uh, to say no. You know, um, I used to think that peer pressure ended in high school, and apparently it doesn't. It keeps going and going and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny. It is amazing how we allow our lives to be ruled by what are other people's opinions and expectations. I have several friends who became engineers because their parents, were either their dad or their mom or both, were engineers, and they were expected to. And now they're like they got a, a jewelry store or something because they did 20 years of that and realized this was not. They knew it from the beginning. There are many of us doing things that we know that are not the truth of who we are, but we're doing it because other people think we should. You know, I mean, and I'll tell you how much this peer pressure is. So I went to a Cardinals game last year, and I really wanted to cheer for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I kept my mouth shut because I knew it was the healthiest move for me to make was not to cheer. I wore red and I cheered, and I love them too, but I'm just saying. That pressure is a lot stronger than we realize, not just in sports. It's all around in our culture. You know, somebody once said, it takes a lot of courage to grow up and be the person that you are meant to be. And the reason is sometimes the world dissuades our individuality, our uniqueness, our out-of-the-box thinking. And sometimes we end up becoming someone we're not because we want to please other people. And it takes courage to be true to oneself. You know, my family didn't mean anything, but growing up in my family, you know, it was almost like disagreeing or saying no was unloving, and agreeing and saying yes was loving. Anybody's house like that except mine? Okay, but it's amazing. And after a while, they'll say, hey, want to do this? Sure, or let's do that. It always was about getting along. It was almost seemed rude if you said, no, no, I don't want to do that. No, nope, I don't agree with that. And I think it took us a long time to mature to realize no doesn't mean not loving. It just means you have a different perspective, and that's okay. You can say no or hear no and realize, <clears throat> and realize your love. All right. Sorry and thank you. <clears throat> so that's such an important thing, is to be able to have the courage to be who you are, have the courage to step out of your box, have the courage to say no to things that maybe you've been doing for years, but you know it's not time anymore. Clarity, courage, and the last one is commitment. The question is, how committed are you to being all that you came here to be and to be unique? Because the fact is, sometimes we will make some mistakes. Sometimes things won't go uh, the way that we want. How many people here have ever 
known you wanted to be a certain way, but you um, ended up doing something that was so different in the moment, and you just didn't have the discipline, um, and you felt really guilty about it after. Anybody ever have that? So we all have that thing. It's like, even though we're clear, even though we have courage, sometimes we'll trip and fall. Sometimes we'll make mistakes. We'll do things that aren't honorable, aren't in alignment. And so when I say about this committed, the committed means it's to hang in there even when you make the inevitable mistakes. And forgive yourself. Be gentle on yourself. Learn from it and keep going. You know, one of the things that the the 10,000 hour rule says is that it takes 10,000 hour rule, uh, it takes 10,000 hours to become great at something, to become great at something. And what that's a powerful message because what it's saying is you can't do everything. Pick what you're good at and stick to it and be committed to it. In fact, Warren Buffett says in our lives, if you really want to have a great life, you can only really focus on two or three things max and give it your all, and you would rise to levels of greatness. But you have to be committed to keep doing the work, keep learning from the mistakes, be gentle on yourself, and to keep moving, keep moving, and moving, because it has a cumulative, it has a cumulative benefit that it will change and transform your life. One of the things I love is, a friend of mine says, every yes gets you close, every no gets you closer to your yes. That when you get clearer with your no, you will get clearer with your yes. And life is calling us to say yes. The whole point of the no is to discover what your yes is because the no's gets rid of the distraction so you could move forward to your yes. So somebody once asked Michelangelo about, painting, about that sculptor David. Everybody know the sculptor of David? He said, so what was it like? He said, you, because you just got this huge slab of marble, how did you do the David? He said, well, I looked at the slab and uh, I saw what David looked like, and then I proceeded to chip away at everything that wasn't David. And, my, my, and the analogy for us is, you've been, given, you've been given a slab of marble called life. And like Michelangelo, you get to see a picture in that marble of who you want to be and the life you want to have, and then you chip away, that everything, uh, chip away from everything that isn't you, everything that isn't the life that you want. And that's the power of no. See, see the picture clearly. Have the courage to become it. Be committed to it and then chip away by saying no and letting go of everything that is not in alignment with the person you want to be, the life that you want to have, and, and the difference that you are here to make. Every one of us can have a great, great and wonderful life, but it takes two words, and that is to say no and to say yes. And the greatest one that takes the most work is to learn how to say no. This week, accept the responsibility and look in the areas of your life where you're having a hard time saying no. Then get clear about what you want. Have the courage uh, to say it, do it. Be committed to it. And I guarantee you, it'll transform your life to a greater level of happiness than you've ever known before. You just have to be willing to say no. God bless you all. So now let's join in with our kids as they lead us in our prayer protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are. (laughs) Amen. Thank you to our kids. Let's hear it for them. Great job, guys. And now let us all rise as we close with our song of peace.
God bless everybody. Great day and a wonderful week.